after my first book was published, 20 years after my first major award as a writer, which was being adjudged the first prize winner of the Step Magazine National Story Writing Competition, and 22 years after my first short story was published in the Weekend Mirror, we gather here to celebrate together the sixth child from my literary loins. This is only possible because along the route for my, on my marathon of writing, many of you have cheered me on through the gates of thought and as I went through excursions in my mind, speaking of Ghana with sabbatical and sympathisms through many tales. Thank you all. I want to give a special tribute to my wife and children, my mom, my father-in-law, Mr. E.W.K. Richardson, to whom this new book is dedicated, and I wish to state that the historian should please note at this as part of the diary I paid almost 15 years ago. This must go to my credit. My paternal uncle, Dada PJ, uh, who just joined us, who has attended all my book launches, coming all the way from Pristia. and who has given me the target of writing 10 books before he goes to the ancestral village. Now that I have four more to go. My siblings and all of you friends, both far and near, thank you very much. I wish to express my deepest appreciation to 200 guests with us today, both of whom have been mentors from afar and then near. Our chairperson and keynote speaker, Auntie Difa, Applaud Difa Tomashi, and the youngest Ulman Bugi, KSM, who are two legends in their own rights. I feel very honored to have you. My earliest memories of my holy village, my very first faint memories are of asking my late paternal grandfather, Nana Premento, why he was sucking the chocolate bar instead of chewing it. Apparently, his teeth had taken a wasali at a time. I don't recollect what year that was, but I do recollect that in 1980, we attended his funeral in the Kropong, traveling in the VW Beetle owned by Ulman Brisco, the famous Catholic friend of my dad's, and Catholic spelled with capital C A T. I recollect the apparent that took place in honor of this late Omahini, and particularly remember tasting dark meat, whatever it is called, uh, apart from double double, which was part of the spoils of the apparent. And those who don't know apparent, when the royal dies, they, they set a curfew uh, for the animals. So any animal found outside the pen in the open finds its way on the highway to the Royal Soup. My next visit, big visit was somewhere around 1983 when we went by a sleeper train, an overnight train from Accra, boarding from Jowulu Station to Tapa, and continuing to perform by road. I recall my late brother Yawapia running after the truck, taking us back to Takwali from the proposal as he wept, and this was during the farming of the 1983. He was a student then at Amifimai Secondary School, the local second cycle school to which my dad sent all my siblings who made it to the secondary school so we could reconnect to our roots and not become Accra people. I only changed from Amens to Ghana National because my class 6 teacher convinced my dad to send me to a science school so I could become a medical doctor because I was good at science and mathematics. A man didn't offer science then. I was later to remedy this deviation from the norm by undertaking my national service after sixth form in a between 1993 and 1994 as a maths and science tutor and also teaching during my first two years at the university during vacations. Indeed, my two, others, my two siblings, Yao and Tiago, who made it through the sixth form, also did their national service within the same traditional area, Yao at Wasa Isikuma and Tiago at Wasa in Yebrim. And when I spoke to Tiago this morning, 
He told me that in Yebrim is 12 miles by road, sea or air. That no matter where you pass to that village, the distance is 12 miles. And it was where my mom uh, taught uh, as a teacher um, for the first time as well. So that began my romance in my hometown. And when my parents relocated to Wasem from Kutubabi in 1987, when I was in Form 1 in Ghana National, I started traveling alone between Accra, Cape Coast and Wasem Kropong, spending many hours on the road. In those days, a journey from Accra to Wasa started at dawn and ended at midnight in the Osa Tata buses. One reached his or her destination either way with a hair colored ginger from the dust. I had many happy times in my village as a boy during vacations from boarding house and during national service days, being taught how to ride a bicycle, how to swim and fish in the Ishri River by my best friend in the village, the Wasafrafra boy called Aboku, who I saw again last year when I visited. Aboku taught me how to speak my mother tongue properly, having been born and brought up in the Kropon. His family are very much indigenous of the village. We went to the, together to the village to fetch water for all activities except for drinking, as we usually harvested drinking water from the roofs when it rained. I learned to push trucks and go to the farms to weed and to harvest. My mom operated a chopper, so I learned about bush meat and how to roast and di dissect it. Happy moments that built my pride in my holy village. One of the major stories around Wasaten was that when it rained, you could find gold nuggets in gutters. My traditional area is rich in minerals, especially gold, and that I'm saying boys were popular then. You could identify them when you, they walk through town during market days with their swagger, colorful dresses, and bling bling. They made money quickly and spent it quickly, and they were raided offering by the police. Even though lucrative, Galamse was seen as illegal, and the citizens ensured with the police that it was under control. Every year since I finished the university and started working, I have gone back home to visit and for important family events, especially funerals. Even whilst working away from Ghana, I still kept that tradition, taking the children with me also as they were added to the family. I visited my holy village of Wasel last December 2016, and I was ashamed of what my hometown had become, a Chinatown with so many Wasanese that I couldn't even see my own people. It had undergone a Chinese invasion with our chiefs in collusion, with Chinese signages everywhere. The rivers now look like milk drinks with expired milk. Parcels of land look like cooked beans mixed with gari and palm oil. A writer observes patterns and is worried of coincidences. So I find it quite significant that the first foreign delegation to visit the new president on his first working day in office on the, on the 9th of January 2017 was from the Chinese embassy. We read history and wonder why our ancestors sold, sold their cake and, thing, and king for rum, shinabs and gunpowder. Yet today we sit and watch as we sell ourselves cheap to the Chinese and many others by extension and in other activities apart from Galamse for yen, fried rice and sweet and sour soup. Acting as if we are a people available for rape by the rest of the world, turning our backsides up and supplying our own petroleum jelly. Aren't we ashamed of ourselves? In some peasants, my mouth has fallen. Thank you all.